This lesson is called Lesson 5B. It's going to talk about hybridization and it's intended for students in the accelerated honors level uh, for cyber chemistry. If we take a look at the definition here, I wrote hybridization is the mixing of orbitals to create new orbitals of equal energy. So it turns out when atoms bond with other atoms, the electrons, when they overlap, also fit into orbitals but they don't fit into the traditional S and P orbitals that we associate with individual atoms. Instead, what happens is when atoms combine with other atoms, their orbitals kind of change. They morph a little bit um, and they form new equivalent orbitals based on the number of bonds that they're capable of making. So if we were to look, for example, at this example of methane, methane has a carbon atom in the center. So carbon would have a single s orbital and three p orbitals. So what we find is when methane bonds, it doesn't form two different types of bonds. It forms four equivalent bonds. And to explain that, we undergo this process of hybridization where we essentially put into a blender the s orbital and these three p orbitals. So one s orbital and three p orbitals and we form four new orbitals that are slightly less in energy than P, but slightly more in energy, higher in energy than S, and we call them SP3. The name of the orbital that we come up with is based on what went into the blender. So if one S orbital and three P orbitals go into the blender, then the new orbitals that come out are SP3. Imagine there's a little one as a superscript here that we're not showing. So the name is based on what went into the blender to form it. So kind of oversimplifying this, if we take a look at this summary page and the hybridization that a molecule experiences is based on the number of electron domains. So be, to be clear, not bonding domains, but electron domains. So if we have two electron domains, that means we're gonna put into the blender one S orbital and one P orbital, and we get out something that is called sp. We have three electron domains. We put in 1s and 2p into the blender. We get out sp2. If we have three elect, or excuse me, four electron domains. We put in 1s and 3ps. Now, when we get up to five electron domains, some students want to say, ah, I get it, sp4. But remember, p, the p sublevel, only has three orbitals. So we can't go up to sp4. So instead, what we do is we pull an orbital from the d sublevel. So we have sp3d, if we have five electron domains. And finally, all the way at the bottom, if we have six electron domains, we wind up with something called sp3d2. So number of electron domains determines hybridization. Know that the superscripts, so the one and the one here, will add up to give you the electron domain. So the one superscript on S and the two on P is how we get three electron domains and so on. So the number of electron domains should be able to dictate for you what the hybridization is. So if you go back and look at the examples that we have been talking about in the bonding and molecular geometry packet, if we go back up to our first example, for our number of electron domains for the water, we have four. So based on what I just said, this should be SP3 hybridization. And if we scroll down to the example with carbon dioxide, where we had just two electron domains, this would be SP hybridization. Okay, so that allows you to fill in that column. If you have any questions, please stop by office hours on Thursday or set up an appointment with me, and I would be happy to help you out. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a great week.